You made your own bed. Now you have to lie in it. Most of us have heard that expression at some time or other and in some form or fashion, usually after we messed up. We expressed ourselves and asserted our own autonomy. We made our own decision and then complained about the consequences. Because consequences can be cruel teachers. Most of the time we heard it when we complained about uncomfortable results because of decisions that were obviously bad or made against specific advice. Times when we should have or actually did know better and needed to learn to accept the consequences of our own bad choices. Hopefully those are rare events with minor consequences that teach us to listen. But sometimes they can lead to terrible, life-altering events. After Abimelech's short reign, Israel obeyed God under a couple of other judges, Tola and Jair in Judges 10 verses 1 through 5. But eventually they made their own bed by expressing themselves, asserting their own autonomy and independent creativity to serve idols again. Again the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They served the images of Baal and Ashtoreth and the gods of Aram, Sidon, Moab, Ammon, and Philistia. They abandoned the Lord and no longer served him at all, Judges 10, verse 6. It's always that way when we sin. We think we're free, doing our own thing, dancing to the beat of our own drum. What we don't realize is that we're enslaved by the same passions and pride as everyone else. We're not unique and creative when it comes to sin. We're just following a different crowd. Usually when they got into trouble, Israel would call on God and he would rescue them. But this time was different. When they called on God for help, his answer was blunt. Cry to your new gods. Let them save you, Judges 10, verses 11 through 14. Realizing the futility of that option, they repented. Put away the idols and return to God, Judges 10, verses 15 through 16. The repentance was genuine because they returned to God, even though there was no promise of deliverance. And then he forgave them. After they put away their idols and put their trust in God, even though he had told them to seek help from their own idols, they trusted God. See, they realized that serving God was not a market exchange, one where you hand over the cash of faith and obedience to purchase divine rescue. They realize that, that doesn't work. But rather, serving God for his sake is a choice to trust and obey him no matter what happens. God is waiting for us to do that today. He's waiting for us to trust and obey, to come to him on his terms, and he will forgive and cure our biggest problem, sin. Faith, repentance, and baptism are necessary before salvation is given. Not because he owes us anything, but because he wants to save those of us who want to serve him. He will save you if you will serve him. That's his demand and your decision. Will you come to him or call on your idols? If you're not sure, please come back for tomorrow's Morning Minutes in the Bible as we continue exploring what God wants instead of what men want. Until then, this is James McClenney hoping you have a great day.